hello and welcome to the circle at kismet and happy halloween if you're watching this at the time of posting although this is a timeless reading and will apply at the time you come across it so something a little different this month i have some help in the form of madeline madeline mysteriously appeared some years ago at kismet but that is a story for another day Madeline has proved to have some really strange and powerful psychic traits, such that I have asked her to assist me with today's reading. Along with today's envelopes, to get some more insight into your next significant relationship, Madeline has brought some antiquities which will give us some further information, and her Ouija board to answer a question you may want to ask at the end. So, if you wish to ask a question, she will endeavour to answer it. Stay tuned at the end of your reading. So without further ado, let's have a look at the options. Here are the six envelopes, which will give us some kind of insight into your next significant relationship and go a little deeper into their inner thoughts and feelings. We also have a Halloween memory that this future potential partner wants to share with you. On the envelopes, we have a selection of Halloween sweets or candy. Each is in a significant colour. Let's take a closer look at the choices. Option number one, the red sweets. Option number two, the yellow sweets. Option number three, the orange sweets. Option number four, the green sweets. Option number five, the blue sweets. Option number six, the purple sweets. This reading is for guidance only and not to sway actions or decisions. It won't resonate with everybody, so take what you feel applies for you and leave the rest for everybody else. The timestamps will be down below in the description box. Don't forget to think of a question for Madeline's Ouija board and I'll see you at your reading. Madeline, what's in the drawer? What's in there, Madeline? It's a bird. Madeline pulled the bird out of the drawer for you. The bird is stationary and not taking flight. This may indicate a need to spread your wings and to allow your ideas to expand way beyond where you feel your limitations are. The bird trusts a branch will take its weight and that its wings will support it in flight. Now is a time to take a leap of faith and to believe in yourself as you are supported. If there is something that's on your mind that your inner chatter prevents you from doing, or that you constantly persuade yourself out of, now is the time to actively make a positive move towards your goals. The bird here is glass. The transparency denotes how you need to be and how you expect others to be too. Be honest, don't hide away your feelings. Be who you really are, to stay true to who you really are. Glass as a medium is fragile. Take some time if you feel low to nurture your soul and revive your inner spirit. It won't be long before you are back to your chirpy self. So now let's take a look at your cards. As I said at the start, we have a potential Halloween memory with your future partner. Um, let's just have a read of that. It's just in the envelope. And just see what it says. On occasions where I have had my fortune told, the reader reassures me that I am to meet my soulmate, the person who is my other spiritual half, the one who I've spent numerous past lives with in various different guises, and the one who will fill the void in my heart. I have dreamt about you. My subconscious recognises you and knows the coy smile you do when you're embarrassed, the way you murmur in your sleep, 
and your attention to detail on anything you hold dear. But still, you're just out of reach, and once again, I endure another wait until we can meet and begin our journey. And that's a lovely message to start off with. So here are your cards. The first two are to represent your personality. And we have transform the way you see and embrace oneness with the universe. I'm so pleased these cards came out together. One is telling you that you need to observe the universe not only from a perspective of what you see, but also to feel it with your heart and to use your intuition, your first instincts and your wisdom to your benefit. The other card shows you stepping into the unknown and feeling the earth beneath your feet. Once again, taking in a different source of discovery. Look beyond what is straight ahead and obvious. There is much more to experience when we hone the ability to be more receptive with our entire selves. And this is what you're being called to do. The next two cards are to represent your potential partner's personality. And they are midnight, the most magical hour of all. And the zombie control card. The midnight card represents a transformation, a turning point and a pivotal moment. The zombie is normally someone who is living a false reality. Maybe something that should have been left in the past still has a hold over them. Or possibly they could be clinging to something that died a long time ago. Whilst they cut away this burden from their aura, a new phase is waiting to enter in the space it once filled. This person likes to be in control wherever possible. They are frank, organised and like to be the master of their lives. But this is an impossibility when others are stepping in or stealing their position, be it in relationships or situations, hence why this needs to be resolved. The next three cards are the situation when you meet and you have the three of diamonds, the six of clubs, and the Four of Diamonds. You may have been on your own for some time when you meet, or you may have been feeling lonely for a long period. Life besides this has been ticking along, and whilst you have areas you wish to change, you do have a lot to be grateful for. There is still a need to be receptive to new people, and to open your heart to those who offer words of comfort, assistance, and those with a genuine desire to get to know you on a better level. The next two cards are your connection in a past life. And you have transportation, lessons and blessings. Again, the appearance of a clock is significant. Maybe when you meet in this life, it is all about timing. The previous connection brings in images of partings where you were not aware it would be the last time you would meet, or situations where distance kept you apart for long periods of time, even a passing in a mode of transport. They may now work in transport. They are often karmic lessons to be acknowledged from past lives in this existence, so yours may well revolve around timing and transport. The next two cards are about your mindset. And you have psychometry, which is sensitivity, and footprints, which is direction. It's worth remembering the tools in these cards are things you may have the ability to use if you are drawn to. For instance, trying out psychometry and seeing what you get from holding a piece of jewellery. Going back to the personality cards, you had another card denoting stepping out cautiously and now we have the footprints card. This could be reflecting on how far you have come or it could be about making an impression on someone that will last. The psychometry card 
reflects the ability to hold something like jewellery and to gain an insight from the vibration of the piece. This links in with your personality cards where it advises you to feel the world and to go deeper than just to use the senses we use day to day. The next two cards are what you need to do. And they are intuition and dreams. Pay attention to what you dream about at night, but also what pops into your head randomly. We all have a gift of subconscious foresight and sometimes it comes to us in very unusual ways and when we least expect it. Manifestation can play a large part of what we want coming into fruition and knowing your heart and mind's desires, the same thing will bring your dreams into reality swiftly when they finally align. The next two cards are any negative factors and they are Queen of my world and Gilded Regret. There's an essence of living in the past here. Maybe one or both of you will compare this relationship to one that once was. Instead of thinking how good that was and being defeated trying to get this to match up, realise hindsight plays tricks and if that original relationship was that good it wouldn't have ended. This is a new, fresh start with somebody who, if treated right, could be a wonderful addition to your life. Take the confidence that you feel that you've had tucked away in your comfort zone and unleash it on the world. It will make a positive impact and can change the dynamic not only of your life path, but of this relationship. And the final cards are the potential outcome. And you have... The Ten of Pentacles, the Eight of Cups, the Hermit, the Knight of Pentacles, and the Ace of Cups. You want a firm foundation and to be loved with all the feelings you have been giving to others but which were not returned in the right balance or way. You were faced disappointment and sacrificed what you wanted for others only to be let down. This relationship will begin a new cycle. There are a wealth of opportunities ahead and ensuring you take things slowly and enjoy the early days of a blossoming new romance, or just one day at a time, it will allow you to slowly trust, grow and ultimately bond with the person that you have connected with. Next, if you just concentrate on the question that you were supposed to think. Next, if you just concentrate on the question that we talked about earlier, then we'll see what Madeline and the Ouija board can come up with. So, if you're ready to ask your question, pause this video, close your eyes, ask the question three times in your mind. And when you're ready, reopen your eyes and play the video. Do you have an answer for us, Madeline? Straight to the yes. N O T H I N G nothing V E N T U R E D So nothing ventured. That's your message. Well, I hope you like this reading. If you do, give us a thumbs up, a share or subscribe.
and I'll see you in the next one. Madeline, what's in the drawer? What's in there, Madeline? It's a key. Madeline pulled the key from the drawer for you. Keys always have an air of mystery and tend to keep secrets. There are things that you harbour that you are happy to share with the right people and others that you keep hidden deep inside. Some things you should really process and release as keeping them is giving them your energy and can allow past situations to eat away at your happiness that you seek today. The key king seems quite solitary, without a lock, like it is to decorate but not to function. It needs a companion. You may work better with other people than alone but there are times when you lack a support force to aid and guide you. Know that this part of your journey does not require others and is purely for you to evolve and do whatever inner work, healing or growth is required. This taking place now is for your highest good and is key. So let's go over to your cards. For those of you that picked the yellow sweets, here are your cards. And we're going to start, first of all, with the message from your potential partner about a future Halloween memory. And that's here. And it says, I see a snapshot of our future together. We sit in a garden, graced with autumnal leaves that flurry around our feet and rustle lightly in the breeze. We are chatting, laughing, enjoying a pumpkin soup with homemade rustic bread and an array of seasonal delights with hot drink, the steam of which wafts between us. The sun sits low in the sky and highlights your skin. You take a baked treat from the cake stand and take a bite. You smile, as if you can sense what I am thinking, and nod in agreement. It is another happy memory we have created together. I think that's quite a nice way to start the readings, with a message. And on to the cards. The first two cards are to represent you and we have it's a time to lead and perfect acceptance. There are times where we need to go with the flow, to sit back and take what life throws at us with good grace and see what lesson we need to take from them to evolve. Equally, there are times when we need to take control and be the leader that we are required to be. It may not be easy and bold action may be required, but this does get results, turns the tide and reassures us that we have what it takes to be our true selves. This combination of cards is about balance and knowing which it is the time for. Only you can decide and that choice should not be because it's a simpler option. It has to be what you are truly drawn to. Only then will you be on the right path for what is ahead. And the next two cards represent their personality. And we have Skull of Darkness, Blind Spots. And we have Joy, Rejoicing in the Present. There's a certain sense of joy when we're free from worry. This also applies when we're being true to ourselves. This person has performed a lot of soul searching, inner work, and ultimately transitioned into the best person they can be. It may have been hurt that led them to this part of the journey. It may have been loss of a loved one or even others actions or comments that drew them to question why they are not enough, what their true purpose is and if they actually deserve love. Of course they do, but only going through this tunnel of realisation has brought them finally to their feelings of worthiness. The next cards are about when you meet. And they are the Six of Diamonds, the Ace of Spades, the King of Hearts, and the Five of Diamonds. You have a very appealing nature, a kind heart, and want to make a difference in the world. Whilst many embrace these attributes, some can take advantage of them. 
If you have been hurt by others or feel that you are giving with little in return, take a step back. Think about what, you, what and who you give your time to and ask yourself what they provide that nourishes your soul in return. When you have a balanced energy exchange, things thrive, whereas an imbalance means drained energy, tiredness and a lacklustre feeling. It's at this point when you are exploring how you see yourself with others that this relationship will start to come into being and you will know just the right mixture to nurture it to truly flourish. The next two cards represent a previous life you will have had together. And they are persecution and inquisition and authority figures. These two cards literally flew across the room while I was shuffling. There was clearly a difference between your statuses in a previous life. It may have been a class divide or a culture difference, but there was a reason why your connection between you both would have been frowned upon. One of you may have been serving the other like a butler or a maid, or one may have been a judge or a police officer and the other a criminal. There is an essence of wanting to break free from your lives and to just be, but this was not an option and would have led to immense trouble for both parties. I also felt drawn to the witch trials and sensed that you both knew that you should be together, but sheer frustration as to not being able to fulfil that in this life. The next two cards are your mindset and they also reflect tools that you do have the ability to use with regard to divination. And they are geomancy, which reflects patience, and the pendulum, which is about decision. So the geomancy card is about finding patterns in things, be it sand or rocks or other mediums. It can often relate to natural things. And the meaning of the card is about patience, so again about timing. The pendulum is about guiding um, obviously whatever medium that you're using as a pendulum and it's guided by the natural forces of the spirit so it's good for direct questions what is it you want to achieve what do you wish for in life where do you want to be this time next year you need to do some soul searching to find out what makes you happy and more importantly to find what does not serve you anymore removing dead wood leaves space for new things and the ever-changing need to evolve Ask yourself the questions that need answers and you are halfway to attaining your desired future. And the next two cards are what you need to do. And they are centering and celebration. It's good to have lots going on and to be in demand but it doesn't leave any time for yourself. Putting others' needs ahead of your own is kind, but leaves little resources for you or those who are too proud to ask for your advice or help. Putting yourself first is a necessity at the moment and it is not selfish. Celebrate who you are, what makes you happy and look for gratitude in everyday things. When you are centred and work for your soul outwards, you will soon not only feel the empowering sense of the person you are, but also those who gravitate towards you will do so for the right reasons. And the next two cards are any negative forces. And they are artificial heart and bride in a cage. The dangers in this relationship seem to revolve around timing in particular. Waiting for a time that seems perfect, which may never arrive. The bride in a cage should be enjoying her special day, but she's imprisoned, worrying about other things. Rather than waiting for the perfect day, it is more about making the day perfect and utilising what you have to the best possible conclusion. The artificial heart warns of sharing true feelings and not just agreeing to things to keep the peace. Love is a two-way street. Feel free to express your feelings and to be honest and true to yourself in all romantic endeavours. And the last cards are the outcome. And they are the Six of Cups 
the Fool, the Tower, the Six of Pentacles, and the Four of Swords. This could be a relationship with an ex or someone that you already know or someone that reminds you of someone you've already met. There's a feeling of wanting to give this your all, but a fear that it may collapse around you should you do so. There is an essence of things stopping and starting for whatever reason. Maybe distance keeps you apart, long hours working or studying, but whatever the reason, there is a solution. And if you are prepared to meet in the middle and both work towards this becoming a solid union, over time, it will surprise you. So as I said in the beginning of the reading, we're going to ask Madeline and the Ouija board for an answer to a question that you've potentially got in mind. So if you just have a little think on that for a moment. So if you're ready to ask your question, pause this video, close your eyes, ask the question three times in your mind. And when you're ready, reopen your eyes and play the video. Do you have a message for us, Madeline? Or straight to the yes. What is your message, Madeline? M. A. Y. B. E. Maybe. T. O M O R R O W Ooh, maybe tomorrow. Well thank you Madeline for your message. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you do, give us a like share and think about subscribing and I'll hopefully see you in the next reading. Madeline, what's in the drawer? What's in there, Madeline? It's a pendant. Madeline selected the flower pendant from the drawer for you. This pretty flower encapsulated in the pendant is a reminder that you are beautiful and beauty is within. The flower has been retained at its best. It will never deteriorate or change. This is like our memories. We capture a single moment, commit it to memory, but then we tend to compare other moments to it, often feeling today's actions do not measure up. To the amazing ones of the past. Each situation in life, each relationship, everything we encounter is different and should be judged accordingly rather than comparisons to others previously. The pendant also resembles a bubble. Are you guilty of shutting yourself away, distancing yourself from those who you feel you once felt close to? The pendant can denote this or possibly a need for space of this kind. A short time of stepping back and away from things, even momentarily, can give a new perspective and a burst of renewed energy before you blossom once more. So, if you're ready to ask your question, pause this video, close your eyes, ask the question three times in your mind, and when you're ready, reopen your eyes and play the video. Do you have a message for us, Madeline? Straight to yes. S. U. P. R. I. S. E. Surprise. A H E A 
D. Surprise ahead. Well, thank you for your message, Madeline. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, give us a like, share and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Madeline, what's in the drawer? What's in there, Madeline? It's a pendant. Madeline selected the flower pendant from the drawer for you. This pretty flower encapsulated in the pendant is a reminder that you are beautiful and beauty is within. The flower has been retained at its best. It will never deteriorate or change. This is like our memories. We capture a single moment, commit it to memory, but then we tend to compare other moments to it, often feeling today's actions do not measure up to the amazing ones of the past. Each situation in life, each relationship, everything we encounter is different and should be judged accordingly rather than comparisons to others previously. The pendant also resembles a bubble. Are you guilty of shutting yourself away, distancing yourself from those who you, feel you once felt close to? The pendant can denote this, or possibly a need for space of this kind. A short time of stepping back and away from things, even momentarily, can give a new perspective and a burst of renewed energy before you blossom once more. For those of you that picked the flower pendant and the orange sweet, here are your cards. But we're going to start off with a Halloween memory from your potential partner in the envelope. And here it is, and it reads, I watched the children parade up and down the street dressed as goblins, zombies, witches and vampires, all with their little buckets brimming with sweets. They trundle up the paths of those with lit pumpkins drawn like a moth to a flame. My mind wanders to what our Halloweens will be like. If we went to a fancy dress party, what would you go as? I imagine your face clad in face paint. Dark makeup to your eyes, giving you a haunted, larger-than-life appeal. Your lips are painted to fit the character, and your teeth look stark white in comparison. I look at you as a whole, and even dressed as you are, you look stunning, and I am so proud to be at your side. So that's a nice start to the reading. The first set of cards that we've got reflect your personality, and they are protection, set personal back, boundaries and oblivion open your arms it's a long time since you have felt truly loved deep down you have questioned if it is something about you that has prevented you from finding a suitor but rest assured you have needed time and space the isolation you have been in and living in was required you are an open person who takes pleasure in being the friend you would dearly like to have, offering a listening ear and a warm smile. This is who you are and who you always have been, but there are times in life when you need to set boundaries and the universe needs you to be more guarded and to protect your heart. In the past, not doing this can lead to hurt, unnecessary soul searching and locking yourself and your heart away to avoid replaying similar scenarios in future relationships. The next cards reflect their personality and we have Lady de los Marutos, acceptance and equality and vampire which is emotional intelligence. This person looks to be the complete package, however although they say the right things and do the right things, coming across as a great catch. They do harbour some in-depth insecurities and need reassurance, although they never would admit it. They want everything to be equal and balanced in their lives. They hate upset or embarrassment. They have a wide circle of friends, but do not make deep and meaningful connections easily. They need someone who's stable and grounding to bring out who they truly are in a relationship. They thrive on compliments from others and use public opinion and advice as a sounding board for measuring their success and worth. And then the next cards are for 
when you mate. And we've got the Ten of Clubs, the Nine of Hearts, the Seven of Spades, and the Queen of Hearts. You have been waiting for a relationship like this to come along for some time. There may be some rumours about this person or their past that you need to investigate at your own, for your own peace of mind. There also may be people who feel that they want revenge by spreading unfounded nonsense to look like facts. Their past, as with yours, is their past, but in order to have the future you desire and deserve together, it is important that you clear the air of anything you feel stands in your way and to communicate clearly anything you want to convey direct to one another rather than information getting back to them or you from other sources. The next two cards are about um, a previous life you may have had together and you have trust and faith and Greco-Roman. So the connections from previous life or that of being from an ancient time or being in some kind of closed community in a time that's completely unlike today. You were trusted companions and felt completely at ease with one another, a trait you will revisit when you meet in this lifetime. I think there may have been a connection in the past life to religion that you both had a strong pull towards, or a spiritual or religious belief system, or potentially a, re a regimented lifestyle that's brought together by the community. It's obviously something that's that's set by the people around you and you came to be a part of this you even now may enjoy revisiting sites of interest or reminders of that era that you were so strongly a part of together the next part is your mindset for this relationship and it could potentially be tools that you may be drawn to um, for divination purposes um, if, if you so wish but the, this is what's coming out for you You've got the coins, which are abundance, and you've got the Ouija board, which is caution. You are naturally abundant, but recently you have felt that you are lacking in luck and the rewards that you've worked so hard for aren't there. Also, you have lots of love to give and want to share your life with a significant other. Whilst prosperity is on the cards, there is a need for caution. If something seems too good to be true, then it often is and should be avoided or at the very least should be considered in more depth before you move towards it. Do not let things sway your own feelings and particularly how your gut reaction and heart feel about a person or a situation. And the next two cards are what you need to do. We've got Sanctuary and Discernment. Following on from the last cards, you are the master of your destiny and only you can make a judgement of what is right or wrong for you. Some will view you as judgmental, others will see your morals as a good solid boundary, but you do not need to worry about others' opinions and more importantly, if it is someone who holds no real merit in your life, does it matter what they think? Go with what your heart and your head tell you, it is easier if they are in unison and are getting the same feeling. Don't rush decisions. Thinking time and seeing the full picture are tools to be truly grateful for. And then the next two cards are any negative attributes that could potentially come into the relationship. And you have Calling the Storm and Colourless Angel. If you turn a blind eye to something that's getting progressively worse, it's going to engulf you. The colourless angel is drained and has closed off to the outside forces in a bid to turn away from negativity rather than to find out what is not working and communicate about it. The storm brews outside and is prepared to challenge and call out those who can be swept away for burying their feelings so deeply that they just cannot be found. And then the last cards of the outcome. And we have... The Knight of Pentacles, the Nine of Swords, the Ace of Wands, 
and the Page of Pentacles. I think this relationship will sweep you up in a frenzy to the extent that you are worried about the speed things are moving at. There will be some form of proposal early on. It may not be that kind of proposal, but an invitation to something pivotal and which will be proof that the relationship is here to stay. Take the relationship at a pace you feel comfortable with and rather than saying a straight no to suggestions that you're not, instead replace them with a proposal or an idea of your own by way of a compromise and to balance what you both want to do. And so at the beginning, I mentioned that Madeleine would look for some answers on her Ouija board for a question that you had in your head. If you have a quick think about that, we'll go over to her now. So if you're ready to ask your question, pause this video, close your eyes, Ask the question three times in your mind and when you're ready, reopen your eyes and play the video. Do you have a message for us, Madeline? Straight to yes. S. U. P. R. I S E surprise A H E A D surprise ahead. Well, thank you for your message, Madeline. I hope you enjoyed this reading. If you did, give us a like share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Madeline, what's in the drawer? What's in there Madeline? It's a button. Madeline selected the button from the drawer for you. The button represents someone that generally is well anchored in reality, is dependable and who can be relied upon to keep things together. Buttons are normally regimented, therefore organised and are often pushed to the limit by what is thrown at them in life. They are often people you turn to when everything is falling apart, someone that you can ask for help or that will have a listening ear. But whilst you do this for everyone else, who is there for you? Who can return the favour and be at your side like you do for others? The button can denote someone who would love to break with what is expected of them, but often responsibilities prevent this. And spontaneity and adventure is lost in the daily routine and the to-do list. Being reliable can weigh heavy. However, balance with being individual and a lighter approach to life sometimes can allow you to unwind. So let's take a look at your cards. So for those of you that picked the green sweets and the button, here are your cards. We're going to start with the Halloween memory that your potential partner's written about you and expressed, which is here. I'm going to read it out. We sit in the old wooden carriage, sipping a hot drink. You're wrapped in an oversized brown scarf, the bulk of which frames your face and complements the rosy glow of your cheeks. We look out across the pumpkin patch at the orange vegetables dotted across the landscape for as far as the eye can see. I've enjoyed selecting pumpkins with you this year, straight from the pumpkin patch. It's given us a perfect chance to laugh, tell each other Halloween stories, to have some fun, and most importantly, to be ourselves and enjoy our favourite season. always think the letters that are channeled are quite a nice way to start the reading off and to give you a flavour of what's to come. So onto the cards. The first two cards reflect your personality and they are liberation, free yourself and translucence, love the darkness. 
You are self-sufficient, but you have been required recently to accept help and support from others. It's a time to shift back to being at the helm and being in full control of your choices and decisions. Now is the time to take the reins, while situations and circumstances have forced us to move and bend in ways that we have felt is uncomfortable. This is a time that now we have realigned to where we need to be to take charge. Look to return in the favour to those who have supported you and bear in mind the help that they have given you. Should someone call on you and need help, you can return it in a similar way. The next two cards reflect their personality and we have scrying, which is intu intuition, and jack-o'-lantern, which is protection. This is a very grounded person who knows themselves inside and out. Someone who has done a lot of work to become the person they are today and who is finally ready and in a good position to share what they have to offer. They have a vast array of skills and can turn their hand to most things. If they are not confident in something, they will research it or seek advice and help from other means. But they will take new opportunities with open arms and try their best to help combat or rectify whatever needs their attention. On a spiritual note, they have the ability to communicate with others via telepathy, but have not been allowed to fully explore this. You may find they have similar ideas, views, and even finish your sentences, as in fact they pick up on prompts from you at the moment you think them. The next cards are about when you meet, and we have the Ten of Hearts, the Three of Clubs, the Ace of Hearts, and the Two of Hearts. You are a naturally loving person and may potentially have a job or a family that needs your care and attention. There are an array of opportunities about to open up to you and you are going to be faced with making some choices that you thought you would never have to make. Now is the time to be grateful for what you have, but think about how you can increase the possibilities in your life, what your updated dreams are, and who or what you would like to bring into your life. When you focus on something with all your heart and do not question with logic how it will arrive, it has the best chance of manifesting into your reality. The next cards reflect a past life that you've had together. And we have ships and wars and battles. This was strange as when I shuffled the cards I had a feeling of conflict and then these dropped out which could either work together or independently. I feel the union you had in a previous life was quite well established but was cut short in several lifetimes. A fear of deep water or loud bangs may now confirm this lifetime. This time around you are meeting in hopefully more peaceful times but there will be qualities and mannerisms that could stand out or that are strangely familiar based on your past lives together. The next two cards reflect the mindset and we have Oracle Wisdom and Orkham Nature. You may have been living in a modern age but parts of you might be intrigued by things that reside in the past. In particular those things that have guided us in spirituality and have maybe deemed witchcraft. It may be something as simple as mixing a recipe in the kitchen, making a soap, gathering wild herbs or flowers, or just enjoying the abundant wealth of possibilities that nature contains. Being out in the open not only cheers the mind, but also recharges the batteries. Be it a field, a mountain or a beach, the outdoors gives our senses a wonderful uplifting feeling, allows us to, to live in the moment and rejuvenates the heart, soul and mind allowing us just to breathe and be. The next cards are what you need to do and you have transition and love. Your mindset has been preoccupied with lots of different things and splitting your time in so many directions can mean that you do not have enough resources to complete anything and leading to tired and depleted energy levels. You are ready for love. 
and all that has happened in recent years has led you to this transitional phase. There are pockets in your life that are about to change. Your work, study or day-to-day -day activities can undergo an overhaul and this will begin to see the start of a new you and a phase that will bring the relationship you have longed for for what seems like forever. The next cards, any negative resources in the relationship and we have Is This Me and Revenge. You or your partner could become so intoxicated in this relationship that you can begin to lose who you were before you became part of this. Watch out for making time for others. It is important no matter how much you love your significant other or they love you that you maintain time for others and doing all the normal activities. Within a new relationship comes new opportunities and these should be embraced and enjoyed. If you or your partner do not want to spend as much time together, don't take it as a slight or a negative thing, as clipping wings or stopping freedom is a negative. It's healthy to have independent interests and it keeps you individual as well as in a couple. And then the last cards are the outcome. We've got the Nine of Pentacles, the Nine of Cups, we've got the Chariot, the Hangman, and the Empress. You both like your freedom and independence and have been used to doing your own thing. Finding a balance of being yourself and combining time together is a fine balance, but it is accomplishable if you talk and express your feelings. This can save thoughts of feeling neglected from either party. There may be a desire to change long set plans, to incorporate different travel or a gap year or a cruise. There is also a desire to settle down quite quickly, although this may be too swift for one of the partners and not fully thought out. If you want children to expand your household with pets, family, adoption or a lodger, wait until your partner suggests it and brings up the topic. There is a danger of them feeling unable to refuse should you bring this up and this could be a seed where resentment can be sown. And at the start of the reading I mentioned to try and think of a question you'd like an answer for because uh, we're going to have a look and see if Madeline has an answer on the Ouija board for you. So if you're ready to ask your question, pause this video, close your eyes, ask the question three times in your mind, and when you're ready, reopen your eyes and play the video. Do you have a message for us, Madeline? Do you have a message? Yes. What's the message, Madeline? L O O K look T O look to T H E look to the P a S T Look to the past and that's your message. Well, I hope you enjoyed that reading. Give us a like, share or think about subscribing and I'll see you in the next one. Madeline, what's in the drawer? What's in there, Madeline? It's a ring. So if you picked the blue sweets and the green ring, these are your cards. I'm going to start off with the memory that your potential partner has outlined. Halloween memory. 
The Halloween party is in full swing and across the candle lit garden, through the barbecue smoke, I see you talking and laughing with your friends. As I approach, it is your turn to apple bob. It is not long before you appear from the barrel of water, face wet and glistening in the dim light, apple held firmly in your teeth and your eyes brimming with excitement. We have freshly dipped toffee apples to celebrate and I watch as you relay the details of your success. I am in awe of your beauty as the moon casts its gaze over us and in that moment we have made an unforgettable memory. Okay, that's a lovely way to start the reading and we'll move on to your card. So the first two cards reflect your personality and we have vertigo, whatever you choose will be correct and sacrifice, what can you let go of? You are a fortunate person. You are someone who not only adapts to different life phases and changes easily, but you also have the ability to evolve depending on what the situation is that you're in. That said, you do not like cutting ties with people, especially when you feel that the reason that you have drifted may be your fault and you are not as close as you once were. Accept that you meet people for a reason, a season or a lifetime and not everyone is supposed to stay the course of your life. What you release will allow space for new opportunities that are currently vying to enter your life and these in turn will draw more of what we need in the now rather than dragging along what we were affiliated to and have outgrown in the past. The next two cards are their personality and we have the underworld where all things pause and begin again and we have apple risk and reward. This person is someone who enjoys change. They want to be full of exciting thrills and they feel happiness comes from attaining their desires rather than on a more deep rooted emotional level. They are risk takers, someone who goes hard or goes home, an all or nothing person. They may come across on the surface as selfish, but they do not mean to, mean to be so orientated on themselves. And being alone or having the wrong relationship have left them prone to finding a love of something that is not a person or someone that can hurt them. You will find there is a reason to this personality cho person personal choice. However, you need to gain a deep sense of trust and need a lot of compassion and reassurance if you want them to open up to you and talk about the different parts of their life. The next cards reflect when you'll meet. We have the Ace of Clubs, the Six of Hearts, the Two of Clubs and the King of Diamonds. There's a very strong physical attraction between you. It is one of those situations where you just adore being around each other and want to spend all your time together. Things can move quite quickly and this is fine as long as you are both happy with the pace. Avoid any joint investments in the early stages of this relationship though, as having financial restraints can dampen, dampen the flames of passion and can be detrimental impact on your early life together. The next cards are a past life or past lives that you've shared. And we have Egypt and Orphan. There are several past lives you have experienced together. In some cases, you feel that one of you has been snatched away too soon, leaving the other to face the rest of their lives alone. Egypt came up, although this may just refer to an area that appears of a similar climate. You may have a love of feeling drawn to anything involved with Egypt, Egyptian history, art, jewellery or the way of life. And this can be a reflection of this period. The next cards are the mindset around the relationship and we have smoke prayers and dice gamble it's also worth mentioning that the mindset cards are also forms of divination and something that you may actually want to practice to see if you can get something yourself your mindset on meeting this person is to give it a go they may not be your usual type they may be your complete opposite but you're not only physically attracted to them, they intrigue you too, if only for the challenge of trying to tame them. Be aware this person comes with their faults, and for some of you, you'll have to drop the ideal partner that you've had in your head for the unknown. This is a gamble, 
as it could work out beyond your wildest dreams or it could fall short of your expectations. You won't fully know until you encounter them and start to get an idea of how you feel as things unfold. The next cards are what you need to do. And you've got strength and reflection. Going with the flow is the way with this relationship. Spontaneity is order of the day. There will be ups and downs in this union, highs and lows, a roller coaster of fun, laughter and enjoyment. But as with everything in life, this will be sprinkled with doubt and uncertainty. A need to focus on the possibilities and to work on the negatives and equally talk to each other. Remain strong when things go wrong and give someone the benefit of the doubt unless they make a habit of abusing your trust. The next two cards are any negative potential attributes and we've got addicted and I won't cry for you. One of you in this relationship has an impulsive personality and this can cause problems in a relationship, if not in life in general. There's a chance of behaviour going off the rails, but this is not a given, just a worst case scenario. There is a guarantee that having an impulsive side brings the potential of easily getting carried away, addictive traits and being a thrill seeker. This is a phase of life though and not a full on or long term underlying essence of this person. And whilst it can be tamed and lessened, it will take strength of will, time and a lot of reassurance to counteract that they don't need what they are drawn to. And the final cards are the outcome. And we have the Four of Wands, the Knight of Wands, the Three of Pentacles, the King of Pentacles, and the Six of Swords. So for the outcome, it's a meeting of minds and an instant attraction from the start. The progressing is equally as erratic with times when you will be made to feel a million dollars, but others where the attention is taken elsewhere and you simply become a bystander. The future of this relationship really depends on how deep your connection is, how strong your bond becomes, and on how controlled you can keep the wayward behaviour. Ultimately, the sky is the limit if you remain on track. So, as I mentioned at the beginning of the reading, um, I have a question in your mind because we're going to go to Madeline and her Ouija board in a moment to answer a question. So, have one in your mind and we'll go over to her now. So, if you're ready to ask your question, pause this video, close your eyes. Ask the question three times in your mind, and when you're ready, reopen your eyes and play the video. Do you have an answer for us, Madeline? Yes. What's the answer? O. U. T. Out. O F out of Y O U R out of your H A N D S It's out of your hands. Well, thank you, Madeline, for that message. Well, I hope you enjoyed this reading. Give us a like, a share or subscribe and I'll see you in the next reading. Madeline, what's in the drawer? What's in there, Madeline?
It's a photograph. Madeline selected the photograph from the drawer for you. The photo brings not only a strong connection to your ancestors, but also can denote that you are actively reconnecting with your soul family and those that you have a special bond with. Your psychic, telepathic and guidance in dream state are heightened and now is a perfect time for you to receive signs or messages and also to communicate with others through your subconscious. Your thoughts are powerful and your actions should be bold and made with conviction. You have some deep healing and processing to do from your past in this life or in a previous life and this will culminate in allowing you to release anxiety, worry, stress, all instilled through negative connections and situations. Remember who you used to be and more importantly who you want to be in the future. Take inspiration from those who have touched your life in the past as well as knowing you are spiritually guided and protected by those who walk beside you in the spiritual realms. So now let's take a look at your cards. So for those of you that pick the purple suite and the photograph, here are your cards. We've got a Halloween um, potential memory from the suitor that may be ahead of you, which we'll just have a quick look at first. And that's here. Just see what they say. We've got the landing of the haunted house is dark. A faint glimmer of a lamp sways at the staircase. The tour had ended and we have been left to explore. As you walk across the room to peer out of the window, the moonlight shimmers on your face, your exquisitely carved cheekbones are highlighted and your shadow casts an elegant silhouette on the wall. The old shutter slaps hard against the outside wall, making us both jump. Consoling ourselves, we stand a little closer to, to one another. Your warm arm brushes mine, our eyes meet and we smile. I can't think of a better person to be frightened out of my skin with but you. <laughs> always like the letters in the readings because I think it gives a feel of how someone feels about you from the outset. So with the cards, the first two cards we're going to look at are the ones that reflect your personality. And you have everything in perfect balance. And let chance play its creative role in your life. You are not someone to take things for granted and do like to have things planned and organised ahead of time. Keeping things in an orderly manner makes life easier, and if something escapes you, you feel you've let yourself down. However, at this point in time, the universe is asking you to find a balance, and allow fate and chance to draw in what they want to bring forth. It does not mean you cannot remain organised, but more so that you need to find a balance between what you are used to and what is new and fresh. You will need to adopt a sense of spontaneity for the future, and now is a good a time to start. The next two cards reflect your potential partner's personality. And you have the lamp, remembrance, and the veil, the future. This person is someone who has learnt a lot of life's lessons in a very short amount of time. In some cases, this can include them losing a loved one or having lost a relationship that was pivotal and made a huge impact on their overall persona. After this, they were left looking for something to fill the void, but unable to fully trust that they will not lose someone else, so not expressing feelings to their full potential through fear of history repeating itself. The woman in the card is blindfolded with a red scarf, red being a warning colour and her eyes being covered so as not to face what's ahead. You need to nurture this person to help them remove the restraints of the past and to open their eyes to a brilliant future with you. The next cards are when you meet. You have the five of spades, the three of spades, the two of diamonds and the seven of diamonds. Sometimes it can feel as though you are fighting a battle with someone you don't know. It could be a person from the past, a job, a hobby or similar. But you feel that you do not have the full attention and don't know what to do about it. They are in need of someone's undisturbed attention and unwavering support. 
they need to relearn some of the relationship basics which you can show them by example to get them back on the right path and to prove that you are a solid part of their future. The next cards are a past life that you've shared together or past lives. We have Native American and the arts. The connection in the past to both the Native American Indians and the arts may be connected or could be independent. You may still be drawn to either or both of these and they can reflect in your current life. Maybe you enjoy the supportive atmosphere of your community or what would have then maybe been a tribe. The calming sound of music or a community around a campfire. You may have a desire that you want to play an instrument but maybe you're not musical. All of these things can confirm a connection to this kind of lifestyle and that reflects a previous life of, these, of this kind. The next cards are your mindset and you have clouds which is mystical and you have runes that is perception. It's worth bearing in mind that the mindset cards are also potentially things you can use for divination if you're drawn to. Um, the clouds in the reading though are ever changing and morph and move so lightly they have a mystical sense about them. Just as the clouds drift aimlessly through the sky and need to change with the wind to adapt to the situation of the moments, you may need to do the same. It's down to your perception as to what you need to do, but the important thing is to stay flexible and to be ready to adapt to an ever-changing world. The next cards are what you need to do, and you have faith and enchantment. Just be yourself and relax. You have spent enough time working on yourself that you don't need to do a lot to create the love you desire other than to be out in the world for it to find you. Doing new things and pushing the boundaries of your comfort zone will equally help and not only broaden your horizons in a positive way but will draw connected people to you that you should actually spend more time around. The next cards are any negative attributes to the relationship and we have triumph of lies and forgetting oneself. When you try to negotiate hurt or pain by changing yourself or your actions, you do not combat it but merely suppress it and it continues to thrive but only hidden away. The more you bury it, the more we lie to ourselves that we are okay and as it appears on the surface all is fine but deep within the problems continue. Being honest with yourself and each other is an ongoing necessity that will combat this problem. And the last cards are the outcome and we have the Queen of Cups, we have the Star, the Two of Cups, and the Six of Wands. You have a wonderful understanding of each other. Your friends and family will all be willing for you to get your happily ever after. And if you can bridge the early gaps and distances in the relationship and fine tune the need to share and console, this relationship has the potential to last the distance. Whatever you face, ensure you face it as a team and together. Do not let the past or future trials divide you. As I said at the beginning of the reading, we're going to go over to Madeline and ask if we can get some answers from her Ouija board. So if you have a question in mind, concentrate on it and we'll go over to her now. So if you're ready to ask your question, pause this video, close your eyes, ask the question three times in your mind. And when you're ready, reopen your eyes and play the video. Do you have a message for us, Madeline? Straight to a yes. What's the message, Madeline? What's the answer to the question? U P S Ups 
F O L L O W Oops, follow D O W N S Oops, follow downs Well, thank you for that message, Madeline I hope you liked this reading If you did, give us a like Share and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.